coronavirus disease COVID-19. In the previous presentation, we discussed about March statistics associated with COVID-19, the pathogenesis of the disease and clinical manifestations. Moving ahead now, in this presentation, we shall discuss about the diagnosis of COVID-19, pharmacotherapy and preventive measures. So how do we diagnose COVID-19? The diagnosis of COVID-19 can be based on a combination of epidemiological information, like for example, a history of travel to or residence in affected region 14 days prior to symptom onset. So we discussed in the previous presentation that 14 days is taken as the average incubation period for medical monitoring. Clinical symptoms such as dry cough, shortness of breath, fever, pneumonia and fatigue. Laboratory tests such as reverse transcriptase, real-time polymerase chain reaction or RT-PCR tests on respiratory tract specimens and or, or computed tomography imaging findings. So first, let's take a look at the type of sample that we need to collect for PCR. Nasopharyngeal or oropharyngeal swabs can be collected as well as nasopharyngeal wash or aspirate can also be collected. To collect an oropharyngeal swab, a dacron or rayon swab is used which is rub on the oropharyngeal region in order to collect the specimen. Cotton swabs or wood shafts can interfere with RT-PCR assays, hence sterile dacron or rayon swabs should only be used. Samples can be collected from the upper or the lower respiratory tract, but it was found that lower respiratory tract samples have high sensitivity as compared to the upper respiratory tract. Additionally, blood tests can also be done for the determination of leukocyte count and for viral detection. The sample for PCR should be collected within 14 days of last contact with COVID-19. Till date, viral testing remains the only specific method of diagnosis for COVID-19. Now, talking about PCR, that is polymerase chain reaction, in relation to COVID-19, RT-PCR, that is real-time reverse transcriptase polymerase chain reaction, is the most suggested method for diagnosis. It is based on genetic fingerprint. It detects viral nucleic acids. We already discussed in our previous presentation that the coronavirus is a single-stranded RNA virus. So PCR aids in detection of this RNA, that is ribonucleic acid. Polymerase chain reaction is a cyclic reaction wherein the nucleic acids are amplified. They are then quantified and detected based on the amplicons which get segregated on agarose gel electrophoresis. The entire process is dependent on temperature variation. As compared to normal PCR, in case of a real-time PCR, it uses fluorescent dyes or fluorescent labeled oligos. The result may be available in 4 to 5 hours, but further documentation and transportation may delay the availability of the results. The next type of investigation which can be used for COVID-19 are chest investigations. These include chest radiography and chest computer tomography. Chest radiography done on patients affected by COVID-19 demonstrated focal or multifocal unilateral ill-defined airspace opacities and further progressive multifocal consolidation over a course of 6 to 12 days. The findings seen in chest CT were predominantly bilateral ground glass opacity. Ground glass opacity indicates a partial filling of air spaces in the lungs by either an exudate or a transudate. So we know that the lungs are made up of alveoli, which are the structural units of the lung. These alveoli are basically air-filled spaces. As COVID-19 disease progresses, these alveoli get obscured and they appear as ground glass opacities. As the disease progresses, bilateral segmental areas of airspace consolidation may be seen. Consolidation is a region of normally compressible lung tissue that has filled with liquid instead of air. It is marked by induration or hardening of a normally aerated lung. So this is a chest CT of a patient affected with COVID-19 exhibiting multifocal peripheral patchy ground glass opacities. No pruller fusion or cavitation is seen. 
this is another case where you can see multifocal round mixed ground glass opacities. It was also found that these opacities were predominantly seen in the peripheral region of the lungs. In the adjacent CT image, you can see this is a tree in bud sign seen in a few patients of COVID-19. Based on the investigative statistics, it was found that COVID-19 was more often found in men than in women in the studies conducted. A potential explanation for this finding may be protection provided by the X chromosome and sex hormones which play an important role in innate and adaptive immunity. According to the American College of Radiology ACR recommendations, chest CT is not specific and overlap with other infections such as influenza, H1N1, etc. Hence, CT should not be used to screen for or as a first-line test to diagnose COVID-19. CT should be used sparingly and reserved for hospitalized symptomatic patients with specific clinical indications for CT. The management of COVID-19 Till date, specific drug for COVID-19 has not yet been found and the management primarily aims at, at supportive therapy such as antimicrobials and oxygen therapy. Specific therapy for underlying conditions such as secondary diseases like for example kidney failure, hypertension and multi-organ involvement. Till date, no known effective antivirals have been identified for coronavirus infections. There are certain therapeutic agents which are under consideration for the treatment of COVID-19. There are four classes of coronaviruses designated as Alpha, Beta, Gamma and Delta. The beta coronavirus class includes severe acute respiratory syndrome that SARS virus, Middle East respiratory syndrome MERS virus and the COVID-19 causative agent that is SARS-CoV-2. Regarding the pathogenesis of coronavirus in the previous presentation we saw that coronavirus binds to the host cell via the spike proteins or S proteins which undergoes a biochemical modification. This is the first step in the binding of virus to the host cell. The S protein of the virus binds to the ACE2 receptor on the host cell that is angiotensin converting enzyme 2 receptor on the host cell. A recent study revealed that this invas invasion process requires S protein priming which is facilitated by the host cell produced serine protease TMPRSS2. Additionally, the study also showed that camostat mesylate, which is an inhibitor of TMPRSS2 enzyme, it blocks SARS-CoV-2 infection of lung cells. Camostat mesylate is a drug approved in Japan for the treatment of pancreatitis and this compound or related ones with potentially increased antiviral activity could thus be considered for off-label treatment of SARS-CoV-2 infected patients. Other than this, Remdesivir, which is developed by Gilead Sciences Inc., was previously tested in humans with Ebola virus disease and it has also shown promise in animal models for MERS and SARS. The drug is currently being studied in phase 3 clinical trials in both China and the USA. Production of various cytokines in response to an invading pathogen such as the virus contributes to the host organism's ability to eliminate the pathogen. During a viral infection, the most prominent cytokines produce, produced are interferons, which interfere with viral replication. So, because of their ability to interfere with viral replication, interferons and interferon fusion proteins have been utilized as therapeutic agents for treatment of viral infections for the past 20 years. It is crucial to develop safe and effective vaccines to control the COVID-19 pandemic, eliminate its spread, and ultimately prevent its future recurrence. Since the SARS-CoV-2 virus shares significant sequence homolo homology with two other lethal coronaviruses, SARS and MERS, the vaccines identified in these patents related to SARS and MERS viruses could potentially facilitate the design of anti-SARS-CoV-2 vaccines. Hence, a vaccine similar to flu vaccine is under trial and might be available by 2021. How are you going to prevent ourselves from acquiring the infection? Soap destroys the virus when the water shunning tails of the soap molecules wedge themselves into the lipid membrane and pry it apart. 
We already saw that the virus consists of an envelope of lipids and proteins which is disintegrated when it comes in contact with soap. So the best way to avoid getting infected with the coronavirus is to wash your hands with soap and water. When hands are visibly dirty, wash hands with soap and water for at least 30 seconds under running water and then wipe your hands dry. So now there is the problem that how are we going to know whether we have washed our hands for 30 seconds. So for that you can hum happy birthday song from beginning to end twice. When your hands are not visibly dirty you can use an alcohol based hand rub for about 20 seconds or you can wash your hands with soap and water. Avoid touching your eyes, nose and mouth with unwashed hands that is the T zone on your face which involve the eyes, nose and mouth. Avoid touching them with unwashed hands. You also need to follow coughing or sneezing etiquettes that is when coughing and sneezing you need to cover your mouth and nose with flexed elbow or tissue. After that immediately throw the tissue away and, and wash your hands with soap and water. If there is no tissue available in that case you can cough or sneeze in your upper sleeves then wash hands immediately or you can use an alcohol based hand rub or soap and water. When you cough or sneeze small droplets come out of your nose or mouth which carry the germs. These virus laden droplets are believed to survive on nearby people and on surfaces for about several hours to several days remaining infectious during that period. To prevent transmission on a social scale, avoid agglomerations and frequency of closed crowded spaces. Now we saw that the virus gets transmitted through respiratory droplets which can travel to certain distances but the virus is quite heavy so it cannot travel to large distances yet as a precautionary measure maintain a distance of at least one meter from any individual with COVID-19 respiratory symptoms such as coughing or sneezing. The individuals who present with respiratory symptoms they need to wear masks and seek medical care immediately. Avoid unnecessary contact with animals. Wash hands after contact with animals. Cook animal products thoroughly. The points to remember for a healthcare professional are Hand hygiene, you need to wash your hands before touching a patient, before cleaning or an aseptic procedure, after body fluid exposure risk, after touching a patient and after touching patient surroundings. Maintain respiratory hygiene or etiquettes that is turn your head away from others when coughing or sneezing. Cover your nose and mouth with a tissue. Use of personal protective equipment that is PPE based on risk assessment. WHO also lays down the concept of safe injection practices such as a clean workplace, hand hygiene, sterile safety engineered syringe, sterile vial of medication and diluent, skin cleaning and antiseptics, appropriate collection of sharps and appropriate waste management. Thorough cleaning environmental surfaces with water and detergent and applying commonly used hospital level disinfectants such as sodium hypochlorite 0.5% or ethanol 70% are also effective. So with this we cover the topic of COVID-19 with the information available till date. I hope you have liked this presentation. Please do like, share, comment and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.